Mariupol, one of the biggest cities in new Russian regions that was controlled by Ukraine before this war. Two years ago it was completely destroyed by fightings and now it's alive again and has very good perspectives in the future. Today I will tell you how it was revived. Of course this process is still in progress, but I will talk about everything that happened here from March 2022 till this moment. I will start with the worst moments, March and April 2022, when Mariupol was hell on earth. The Ukrainian army used us as a life shield and they didn't want to leave anything for Russia. And back then I didn't understand why they were destroying such targets as a transformer substation or a supermarket. So everything was destroyed, energy network, water and gas supply, internet and everything else. And there was no garbage removal, so there were large pile of garbage everywhere. And there were graves in each yard. My district was one of less damaged places in Mariupol. But even here there were graves for every 100 meters. And also all places were looted and mostly not by military but by local people. It was a complete chaos. But even before the Ukrainian army was defeated, Russia started to organize the life there. In the middle of March the first center of humanitarian aid was opened. It was the only one for whole Mariupol, so you had to wait for hours to get food. And by the way, Russia gave food to every Mariupol citizen once a month before September, later only for disabled people or old people. And there were also possibilities to charge electrical devices, get free clean water, bath and you also could get free TPR SIM cards with unlimited internet and by the way internet appeared in April and only on the very outskirts of Mariupol. Also a little bit later in the middle of April Russia started delivering free water to people's homes and removing the garbage to avoid an epidemic. And at the same time before the liberation of Mariupol first school was opened. I studied there for a few days before I moved to Donetsk. It was really disorganized because there were simply too many children in only one school. But it still was shocking for many pro-Ukrainians who were told that Mariupol didn't exist anymore. At the same time first street markets appeared. Some people from other cities and villages nearby started to bring bread and other food for sale and many people sold things that they had stolen from stores or from someone's homes and later one of these markets along Shevchenko Avenue grew up to a kilometer long and it's still there just looks more civilized and Russia started to bring a lot of the construction equipment hundreds of dump trucks and cranes. Unfortunately, I couldn't record anything because back then I didn't want to waste my phone battery for it. And at the same time the debris cleaning work began and I left Mariupol on the 22nd of April and returned in July, two and a half months later. Meanwhile, the fighting continued most of Mariupol was already cleared from the Ukrainian army, but some places like parts of Primorsky district were liberated only in the end of April. I had conversations with people from there and they say that living there was like hell. But in the end the Ukrainian army remained only in Azovstal. Russia bombed Azovstal with 1500 kilo bombs and with 3 tons bombs and I remember I saw them at night when I was lying in my bed. I saw the flash and in 15 or in 20 seconds window glass starts shaking. I saw it every day, every night, maybe during week before I left Mariupol. Mariupol was finally liberated on the 20th of May, almost a month after I left and there was no life. 
Russia removed graves from the streets, reburied most of the killed people in the cemetery called Starokrymskaya. In April the new city administration was formed, it mostly consisted of local people who stayed. For the Ukrainians they are traitors and collaborators, but they were the ones who organized everything back then, since there was nothing in Mariupol. The first stores opened in April and in May, the prices for food were high, and most of the stores worked with electricity generators, because there was no electricity at the time. On the 14th of May, first apartment building got electricity connected. The first step for the local government was to estimate the damage to infrastructure and to give people basic things. In some places water appeared first and in some others electricity first. Most of the city didn't have energy anyway. Energy network was completely repaired only around November 2022 and both electricity and water supply weren't stable. Water supply was cut off every week. Mobile internet in the center was stable and more or less fast, but cable internet in my home appeared only in August, which is really quick because for most of Mariupol it was in autumn or even in winter. Now about something very good for Mariupol. In early June, Russia started to make first new buildings in Mariupol, Nevsky district, which is a symbol of new Mariupol. It was built by the military builders as fast as possible, so that displaced people could get their apartments before winter. First buildings in Nevsky were completed in August 2022. It took only three months, because the construction works continued even at night. Twelve buildings were completed before winter. I showed these new apartments from the inside in one of my previous videos. Now I answer a very popular question. Who exactly is given a compensational apartment and how? If someone had their house destroyed during the fightings, that person has a few options to get money, to get home repair services or to get a new apartment. And the last option is available only for those people who have no place to live in. If someone had three apartments and one of them was destroyed and the other two weren't, he wouldn't be able to get a new apartment. And also this process takes a lot of time. Some waited for, for two or three months and some for a year. Most of new buildings in Mariupol are compensational. Buildings for sale appeared very recently after summer 2023. St. Petersburg and Mariupol governors signed a document according to which the cities became sister cities. Later St. Petersburg helped a lot with money, materials and workers for Mariupol. The sistership between Mariupol and St. Petersburg is a very huge topic and perhaps I'll talk about it another time. But that summer the city was empty, everything was looted. There were a lot of homes which were abandoned by the owners and the local marauders stole everything they could later sell. The same thing happened with offices and the government buildings. The reconstruction wasn't started yet, so it was just a post-apocalyptic city. Mariupol also had serious problems with canalization. This is my photo from July 2022. Some works started that summer though. For example, metering of all buildings, roads, etc. Every damaged building was estimated. The DPR government created a database of all the buildings in Mariupol, their damage and their decision about them. Those buildings that were damaged too much had to be demolished, the rest repaired. Russia also started to prepare schools for children. They have been completely renovated. I'll come back to this topic later. The demolition of severely damaged buildings started in August. I recorded one of the very first demolished buildings on the Shevchenko Avenue. And the intensive demolition was over only a year later, in summer 2023. At the same time the Ukrainian currency, Grivna, was replaced by the Russian currency, Ruble. There were no laws or restrictions and you could pay with the Ukrainian currency until the winter. But by the end of summer no one was using it already. 
Also, in August, a uh, first traffic light in Mariupol was repaired. Without the traffic lights, there were a lot of car accidents, especially at big crossroads. Car accidents happened almost every day. The first new monument in Mariupol was installed in August. It's a monument to Alexander Nevsky in the center of the city. It was a gift from St. Petersburg. In autumn, the rebuilding works became more intensive. In September, some schools were already renovated and I want to show more of it. With Ukraine, all schools look boring and grey, so I was amazed by the new designs. It isn't only the outside, interiors were also renovated. One of my first videos was a comparison of schools with Ukraine and schools with Russia. And maybe I'll do the second part about every school in Mariupol. Anyway, most of the schools weren't completed before autumn, so we had distance education or very shortened lessons for 30 minutes. By the way, kindergartens were also renovated the same way, but it was in winter and spring, so I'll return to this topic later. The referendum about joining Russia was held at the end of September, and DPR officially joined Russia on the 30th of September. Right after the referendum, Russia started to intensify the reconstruction works even more. Russia started to replace windows everywhere, not only damaged ones, if you had old wooden windows or you just wanted new windows, Russia would install new plastic windows for you. It was a long process and it took 7 or 8 months to replace windows everywhere, even in destroyed buildings. And the same scene with new radiators. In many buildings the heating system was damaged, so Russia installed new aluminum radiators in every building, even if it wasn't damaged. So now I have these modern radiators instead of the old Soviet ones. The repairing of the damaged buildings had started. In the beginning it was very slow, just in a few places. But it was being done more and more intensively every week. This process isn't over yet and I have no idea when it will be. Buildings that were slightly damaged were repaired first and the destroyed center remained untouched. The update of infrastructure has started, new water and heat pipes, new electric equipment. Ukraine didn't update most of the infrastructure since 1991, so Russia had a lot of work to do. According to the data from the local administration, by the end of autumn everyone already had electricity. The gas supply was finally recovered, at least in my district. I used an electric stove when there was no gas, but a gas stove is much more comfortable and safer. At the end of autumn, many networks of supermarkets of the DPR opened. The prices there were much lower than in markets and little stores, but on the other hand everyone wanted to buy food there, so sometimes you had to stand in queues for 40 minutes to buy something. The construction of new apartments continued, and many new buildings appeared that autumn. The administration started to give housing compensations, but the process was very slow, so most of these new apartments were empty. By the way, these three buildings were constructed at the end of November and it took only three weeks for each. Lock rooms were transported with windows right to the construction area and then connected like Lego bricks. That autumn many people returned to Mariupol from Europe and from Russia. The city began coming to life again. Russia started to invite Caucasian and Middle Asian workers. Later in summer 2023 there would be 40,000 of them. This seems like a rational decision, because there weren't and there aren't enough local men for such an intensity of the construction works. And despite the fact that many Russian people from big cities came here to help us, it still wouldn't be enough. Winter brought many problems to the citizens. Most of the city had no heating and people used electrical heaters. It was a big load for the power system and the old Soviet cables melted. Half of December I spent without electricity, for some it was even more. At least I could use a gas stove, because gas was free, so I just used it. But many people didn't have it. The temperature was down to mi minus 10 degrees. I started having electricity a week before New Year and heating a week after, but many citizens had no heating at all winter. Few words about new 2023 year in Mariupol. 
There was no celebration, but a few Christmas trees were installed in the most popular places such as the center and some parks. The city was still destroyed. The next new year will be celebrated much better though. At the same time the repair works were intensified. When I went for a walk for an hour or two, I saw dozens of buildings being repaired. And all works I've already mentioned like the update of infrastructure and the demolition were intensified as well. Not for the last time, in spring 2023 everything was sped up even more. Russia started to make new roads. First the main roads that are important for logistics, later other roads, but I'll come back to this later. Many roads weren't updated since the Soviet times, just as other infrastructure objects. And at the beginning of February I started to post videos on YouTube, so most of the footage you will see from now on was recorded by me. Back then I didn't expect my channel to become that popular. On the 19th of March Vladimir Putin visited Mariupol. He visited Nevsky district and talked with residents. It was very symbolic and I hope he will visit Mariupol again in the future. The reconstruction works finally began in the center of Mariupol, which was fully destroyed. It was completely untouched before spring 2023. One of the fountains in center was turned on in March. Also during that spring many Mariupol residents received Russian passports. In fact it started in winter, but most of the people got Russian citizenship later. It wasn't forced like the Ukrainian propaganda says and there were no restrictions towards the Ukrainian citizens. Russia started to update parks that spring. First they just cleaned them and then did a complete renewal. It took half a year for some parks. For example, the Victory Park was completed in the end of summer. It also wasn't renovated since the Soviet times and it got new lighting, tables for playing chess and a little skate park. The Primorsky Park was being renovated until late autumn. The board monument was painted in Russian flag colors, signs with information about heroes of Mariupol were installed. Russia also made a new observation deck and updated an old one, and made a comfortable sidewalk that leads to the sea. The first new districts finally were finished. Most of the apartments were still empty, because it was taking a long time to get an apartment. And the Nevsky district was finally opened for everyone. The administration started to make general improvements. The entrances of all apartment buildings were renovated, new doors were installed in each apartment.
New storm drainers were put on the Stalin's buildings. New bus stops were installed. And St. Petersburg gave new buses to Mariupol. Finally, street lighting was made for most of the city. Russia started to overhaul all roads, not only major ones. And also a lot of kindergartens were updated. Same as with schools, they had the same grey color before war. And now each one has its unique design. The interiors were also updated. In some places workers started to insulate and repaint buildings, making Mariupol much more beautiful. But back then it happened in two or three places for whole city. The real work started in August and I'll show more later. A lot of businesses started to open that spring. Mariupol already had everything necessary and even more, but much less than before the war. Now a year later we have everything, a VR club, a paintball arena. Literally everything. Russia is planning to make the city a tourist city, so in the future there will be even more interesting places. In May 2023, Russia launched the first tram in post-war Mariupol. There was a ceremony with Putin about it. After the tram was launched, it became much easier to move from the western part of the city to the Ilichovsky district. Russia is planning to expand the tram line in the future to connect the left bank with the right bank, so it will be just like it was before war. By the way, buses and trams in Mariupol are still free. By the end of spring, almost all of the buildings, except for heavily damaged ones, already had new windows. The scars made by the war continued to fade away. In summer, Russia continued to improve the city and make it more comfortable. New tram stops, new traffic lights with voice new sidewalks, etc. Two big projects were finally completed. The medical center and the school for 1,500 children in the Nevsky district.
Russian military builders started working on the biggest project in Mariupol, the Nahimova Naval School. It's an educational facility for 560 children. It includes a sport complex, a swimming pool, an ice arena, a museum, laboratories, dormitories and many more. It will have its own boiler room and an electrical substation. I really love its design. The box will be finished this year. One of the most important things that started last summer and will continue for at least the next five years is the construction of apartments for sale. Unlike the compensational apartments, it's made mostly for Russians from other cities who want to move to Mariupol. For the last nine months, around 20 buildings for sale started to be constructed. The apartments there are really expensive, just like everywhere in Russia. And the main problem with those apartments is that if you lived in a building which later was destroyed by fightings in one place, you would get an apartment in a compensational building in a different place and not in the new apartment buildings on the same place. It's especially terrible when we are speaking about a good places like the center or at the seashore. You live in an apartment with a sea view and then your home gets demolished and you get in an apartment on the outskirts of the city, while someone buys uh, the apartment where you used to live. I really hope this will be solved in the future. Three universities were finally opened this autumn. Mariupol State University, Priazovsky Technical University and Azov C Institute. I have friends who study in those universities. Before facilities were repaired, they worked remotely, and now just as before war. Now let's talk about the massive update of the old buildings, which started in August 2023. They were all grey, Ukraine didn't care about them and now Russia is insulating and painting hundreds of buildings at the same time. In all Mariupol districts, mostly they are being painted in yellow and orange, but in some other places in blue or in other colors. Mariupol is getting unrecognizable because of it. Two years ago I lived among the burned buildings and now the city already looks better than before the war. I didn't show renovated clinics, fire department, train station, beaches, new ice arena and many more. But that's it for today. The revival of Mariupol is still not finished and I have no idea how long it will take. A year or maybe five years. But Mariupol is getting better every day and I believe 
that my city will prosper in the future. I hope this material was interesting for you. Thanks for watching.